In this video, we're going to take a detailed look at the limiter section in Isotope's Final Mix plugin. Now the limiter here is a BS1770 compliant true peak limiter, and it comes from Isotope's Ozone Suite. But what is true peak? With the introduction of BS1770 loudness metering, mainly in the broadcast sector, we're working so much closer to digital headroom, and so we need really accurate peak meters even more to make sure that we don't go over. Now, video or film is typically made up of 24 or 25 frames a second, 25 still images. That means we have no idea actually what happened between each frame, or in the case of audio, each sample. With digital audio, Early digital peak meters simply took each binary sample value in turn, usually at 48,000 per second, and used that data to light the LEDs in a column-style display. However, these meters were only about 95% accurate. They don't tell the full story when audio is converted from digits back into analog. It's possible that the audio is changed through processes like EQ or other effects, or when the data rate is reduced for transmission and storage in lower quality formats, there may be audio that would measure above the maximum. So to be absolutely sure what's going on, to measure what we now call the true peak value, requires a meter to read four times faster, so making 192,000 measurements per second. And then we can establish what happens in the gaps. And this is really important because now we're working within 1 or 2 dBs of digital headroom. And true peak readings can be up to 6 dBs higher than just looking at the sample measurements. And because a program delivered to BS1770 standards can pass or fail on true peak, it's essential that we measure the peaks of the audio using a true peak meter. And where limiters are needed, just as we have here in the Isotope Final Mix plugin, we need to make sure that those limiters are also working to true peak so that the audio doesn't exceed the true peak specifications. The limiter module also contains true peak and RMS metering for all the channels of the audio that it's looking at. On the meter, the RMS values are shown here in white whereas the peak levels, the true peak levels, are shown here in this grey section. We've then got this little white bar, which is showing the true peak levels, and the time of which this hangs around is set in the options window here. And then when the limiter is actually limiting, you'll see here that we've got a sort of beige colour here coming in, and that's giving us the gain reduction. And of course, it's key that to avoid any steering, that all the limiters across all the channels of audio, in this case 5.1, are all linked together. So even if only one channel goes over, the same amount of gain reduction is applied to all the channels. Now the true peak ceiling here determines the maximum output level for your audio. So all peaks above this point will be limited, and obviously we can adjust that down here so we can increase the amount of limiting and also therefore decrease the ceiling or we can bring the ceiling up if we're just looking for it to protect us against true peaks to make sure that our programs are compliant to BS1770. So that's the ceiling control. Then we've got the lift control and in essence this is a gain control before the limiting. So this will boost the level of the audio going into the limiter. So if we want to actually just push the audio harder into the limiter, we're not changing the ceiling, so it's still limiting, in this case to minus 10.1 true peak, but we can effectively increase the amount of limiting, and you can see now that the gain reduction meters are now indicating much more gain reduction. So let's just bring that back a little bit. Down the bottom here, we have three character options, clear, smooth, and thick. Now when it's set to clear, the limiter will respond much more quickly and therefore will respond to all the fast transient type materials. So a fast attack, if you like, in old-fashioned numbers. Smooth sits effectively 
in the middle between clear and thick and will tend to be the most appropriate algorithm for the majority of program material, including most dialogue. And then we've got thick. With thick, the limiter will respond to audio much more slowly. So it's really useful for louder, slower moving sounds like a big explosion, where you wouldn't want an aggressive limiter to break the sound up. So let's put that back to smooth. Then down the bottom here, we've got an LFE button. Now this will only appear if you're using a channel configuration which includes an LFE channel like 5.1, 7.1. If you're in stereo, you won't see this option. Now by default, this is on, and so the LFE channel will also be run through the limiter and any processing will be made to the LFE channel. You can see here that the gain reduction is being applied to the LFE channel. If I bypass this, you'll now see that no gain reduction is being applied to the LFE channel. So you can choose whether you want to limit the audio going through to the LFE channel or whether you want it to go through for additional impact. Then finally, we've got the option to optimize for either transparency or low latency. Now this was a feature added in version 1.0.1. And so we now have the original algorithm, the one that Isotope created for maximum transparency, but there were concerns about latency issues. And so in version 1.0.1, they added this low latency option. So this algorithm has been optimized for minimum latency. And with the clear character setting, there is only 120 samples of latency. With the smooth character setting, there's 194 samples of latency. And with the thick character, there is 282 samples of latency. So we'll just put that back to smooth and transparency. So in conclusion, you can use this limiter module as a protection tool to make sure that your mixes are true peak compliant, as well as being able to use it creatively to provide additional impact and loudness when needed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.